so there are a lot of things that, you know, there's still a lot of oppression, there's still a lot of bias, there's still a lot going on in our communities. I, we have moms coming into our center with little kids who are still being bullied in school and they're like, what do I do and how do I, how do I take care of this? How do I help my child when the school system is not being responsive? I have people who come out at age 75 and say to me, I was married you know, to my opposite uh, sex partner for 40 years, that person passed away, it's time for me to come out. You know? And this person's terrified, you know, how do I date and be gay? How do I do that? Well, I mean, don't look at me because I have no idea. I'm not very good at that. Um, you know, or they'll come to me and they'll say, I'm in a domestic violence situation and the shelter has no idea what to do with me or they have no idea how to talk to me about the issues I'm facing or, you know, we have people come in and say, you know, my parents kicked me out because I'm gay and now I need a place to live. You know, other folks who will tell us, you know, I was at activist since the days of Stonewall. I have marched in the streets. I have fought for our rights. And now I cannot find a safe place as a senior to live because everybody who comes to my doors has something homophobic to say. These are folks who come to our center. These are people that we, that we deal with every day and we do it through a certain set of programs. You know, there's social programs. So we are really committed to, for instance, racial equity and inclusion. And so we have a director of that. We have dedicated to gender equity and inclusion. We have the cyber center that we use and we do community organizing. We do all of these public, public uh, events, but we also do a bunch of things that are service or, uh, direct services oriented because there are a lot, of, like I said, a lot of needs out there. So could everything from you know, behavioral health services and HIV testing, we do workforce development programs. Um, so people have been out of work for a long time and they wanna get back in, but they don't know how and they're terrified. And so we help them to gain culinary skills and then we help them to get jobs. So you can see as a community center, it's not just that we're doing LGBTQ specific things, we're, we're doing the constellation of things that a person needs in life, you know, for, whether it be housing or job development or you know, just being among other gays. I can't tell you how many people will come into our center and say, it's nice to just be able to breathe. Like, I don't realize how much I don't breathe when I'm out in the world, but when I'm surrounded by other queer folks, I'm like, okay, this is all right for me. So there's a lot that, a lot that we do. And for me, I've got about, you know, Patrick and I, and Patrick really is not even a last minute addition, but maybe a last half minute addition. Um, he agreed to come in and chat with us. He's doing some work with us um, on our data. And so he'll talk to us about that in a moment. Um, but I've got about 15 minutes to tell you about how these 52 staff work with about 45,000 people a year across their lifespans, and like I said, from drop-in to housing, right? And we want to know how we can better use technology and better use our data to reach these folks. Um, you know, and the good news is that I'm just here to talk about the programs. Like, there's a bunch of stuff out there about how to get a better donor or how to send emails to more people. That's all good, and we can always use that help, but I'm focused specifically on the work that we do, okay? So I had a touch of panic when, present, when preparing to do this work, and <laughs> Patrick can back me up on this. I know very little about technology and very little about data. Yes? Okay, I think you, you, you saw yourself <laughs> short, but... <laughs> That's very nice of you. Um, no, I don't. Um, and <laughs> so I'm reading it. Have any of you heard of N10? Right there, right? So they do this technology. So they're really good at technology and, and, and programs. And so I paid my $100 and I joined because I, and I started reading all, through all these reports. I now know enough to be terrified, right? Because they're telling me, right, yes, we've got this ever changing digital environment. It's just always going as an all time high. I'm like, okay, I'm with you. This is exciting, right? And then the nonprofit sector, you know, we really, it, it'll allow us to do so much more than we ever have in our lives. I'm with you. I'm still very excited. And then it crushes me by saying, yeah, and if you don't do it, don't do it right, forget it. Your mission is lost in a in, in a crowded marketplace and, and our missions will suffer. I'm like, that nearly killed me because you're talking about something I don't know enough about that will crush me. <laughs> That's a scary space for me to be in. I'm an anthropologist of violence and I'm still scared, right? So what's the key here is this word right here, 
missions. Those of us who do the work in nonprofit fields like I do, are, are my heart and soul, I live and breathe the mission of my organization. Like I have to make certain that we reach out and, and are able to work with LGBTQ folks who need us. And if you're gonna tell me like the technology and data may make that not happen, well then I'm like a dog with a bone and I'm like, let's make it happen. Right, let's figure this out. So when we're doing these, when I'm doing this research, this is what I see, right? A lot of stuff on major gifts and direct mail and events, social media, and almost nothing on programmatic strategies, right? Almost nothing. So it, even with N10, I'm reading all about this, okay? Which is not a, it's not a terrible thing. This stuff needs to be taken care of at a, a nonprofit, but how on earth do we speak to each other? Okay, so let me tell you a little something about the data at COH and the tech. We grew up as a, non, as a volunteer nonprofit, right? So we, so, or a volunteer run organization that became this, what I call, we're still, even though we're a large organization, we're still what I would call the mom and pop stage of data and technology. We're still, counting in Excel, we're still sort of on our fingers trying to figure out how many things we do, okay? We have no standardized definitions for the work for our data, you know, um, gathering. So one program, their unit of service is not this program's unit of service, All right? So already we have a problem. Our data is not kept in one place kind of kept all over the place, and we'll talk about that in a moment. No standardized reporting parameters, which you will see is a combination of these things, right? And then not a whole lot of understanding of how tech can help us. So Houston, we have a problem. And this problem was what I call this sort of, so you all know about the digital divide, right, for a lot of folks. We have the same issue in nonprofit, in nonprofit world. And I'm not saying everybody has this issue. The NFL is a nonprofit who I'm certain understands data and technology, okay? My nonprofit, not so much. Although we have a wonderful data guy, you know, a uh, tech guy at our agency, it's just, this isn't exactly where his world is, all right? So, in my world, I'm looking at this. I'm like, oh, we have so much need. We do all of these things, you know, and we wanna know, how can I document my work better? You know, how do I reach more people for services? Um, how do we use our mobile devices? I heard that we're supposed to be able to use some video enabled something for mobile phones. And I'm just like, yes, yes we do, right? Because we have a lot of good stories to tell. And then I look at the tech world, and I'm sure that if you all made this slide, all of this kind of stuff would be over here, like you would have a very long slide and maybe a couple things over here, but I made this slide, so this is what it looks like, right? And this is, I'm an example of what I'm trying to fix. And so I was telling Patrick when we were eating those delicious empanadas that yes are five bucks, people, <laughs> right? Um, you know, I want a speed dating situation, right? I want Shy Hack Night to do Shy Hack Night speed dating for, people who have technology and know how to do technology sitting in front of me saying, hey, I got this technology and this is what it's like. And I'm like, yes, please, I want one of you, <laughs> right? Because I don't know what questions to ask you. I don't even have the faintest understanding of where I begin this conversation with you in terms of what you may have available or what you may know but I do know that I have a lot of need, okay? Um, and so in this moment, Patrick, do you wanna say just a little something about like how we begin our conversation? Yeah. Um, so actually we were connected by a friend, a friend that works in the Center for Halstead. Um, I come, I'm, I'm a CTO at Upfront Healthcare Services, and we started a conversation to begin to answer those questions about how does tech enable the Center on Halstead to start to tell a story? A story that reaches out to their donors, a story that helps them become more effective. Um, Kim already talked about how there are many disparate pools of data. 
Some of these are access databases. Some of these are Excel data, or Excel spreadsheets. And every single one of them has a different set of data dictionary requirements. And what I suggested to Kim is that we come together and start uh, kind of in an advisory capacity, a conversation around how we draw together one unified story that the center on Halstead can tell with their data requirements. And we're kind of formulating a process by which we're going to do that. We have a job description that we hope that we can kind of fulfill with either a volunteer role or an internship um, to bring together a, a, a data dictionary, an ERD, the beginnings of the design of a way that we can put all of these programs into one central repository and start to ask the kind of questions that help facilitate the mission of the organization. Thank you. Yeah, so in other words, you know, here's my dream man, right? Because he, he got up onto my whiteboard and said, we'll do it this way. And he was making all of these boxes with lines and, and I didn't understand it, but it's on my board and that's a good thing. Um, and, and so we have a way forward. So what do we use? Patrick was talking about our Excel data sheets. We have more Excel sheets than I even can begin to talk to you about, but let me show you what it looks like. So this is our client data master. Client data master would almost make it sound like there is some sort of professionalization or the, the word master makes it sound so amazing. You put all those words together and it sounds even fancier. It's an Excel spreadsheet that we've had for 11 years. Mm hmm Yeah. Yep. 11. That's what we have. You'll note that there's, you know, very few cells in here that are actually filled out. In large part, it's because my staff not really inspired to fill this, this stuff out, okay? And they're not inspired to fill it out because we've never shown them how it's used. We've never shown them the power that can come from actually filling those cells in because we haven't really had folks there who will pull it all together and say, here it is. Which, you know, look, if anybody wants 11 years worth of LGBTQ data from a uh, LGBTQ community center, have at it, tell me a story, okay? Because I, I just, it's, for me, this is kind of the stuff of nightmares, right? Yay. Um, and so, you know, it is, it, you know, well, I will say somebody's understanding of how you collect data on race or gender, a bit subjective, it's out there. Somebody would, cut, you know, my staff would look at the room, kind of try to figure out how many people are in here. You know, if you're at one of our events, good chance that a good number of you are, you know, big gays, hooray. But that's how the counts, a lot of those counts are done. But they still say something. They are still data that will tell the story of the center in a way that we can't do with just stories, okay? So, and I'm gonna go through these other slides pretty quickly because these are the other way, things that we use, Google, Access. We do have some other um, uh, data, data uh, collection uh, that the city uses. Um, so we do have some of that. Um, but we do use, you know, I don't want to lose the idea of tech also, right? So data, very important, but also we don't know what tech is out there to use. I don't know what a bot is, but I've been told it's really important <laughs> for doing stuff. Yeah, and I don't even mean to, th like, I just don't know, right? But, I, but I've been told that they're important. And so when I looked it up, I thought, we could tell stories with these bots about, you know, how to navigate the criminal legal system when you've been victimized or maybe how to, you know, how long is it gonna take me to get that order of protection? Or what does getting an HIV test actually look like? What do I do? What happens to me when I go for my HIV test? So I, I think there's a connection there that we can make. And a dream would be a relational or object-oriented database management system. That would be dreamy. I don't know what they are, but I know that it does what I think I want it to do. What we've done. Soren is the reason why we're here, because he is dreamy also. And so he and Adam from Microsoft Civic Tech said, we can work with you all. So he's like, why don't you come to Shy Hack Night? And I'm like, yeah, of course, sure, I'm game. And so here I am. Thank you, Soren. And, uh, and so Shy Hack Night here. And then working with Patrick, who I didn't know was gonna be here, but I put him in my presentation. Um, and then 
on September 20th, for any of the uh, women in the room, um, have any of you heard of the movie Freelancers Anonymous at all? It's going to be it, it's going to be premiering at Reeling. It's going to be at Reeling. I don't know. Anyway, it stars two women or many people, but the two main characters are lesbians. And um, did any of you see Signature Move? It's a, the producers who did Signature Move did Freelancers Anonymous. And Lisa Cordelione is going to be here on September 20th. So if you have any interest in tech and doing tech stuff and you want to come to a meeting at Center on Halstead, let me know. Um, so these are things that we've done. And these are ideas on, you know, these are some of the ideas that have been floated to us in the past about like things that we want to be able to do, right? You know, one time when I was at uh, another agency, somebody said, why don't, we make, why don't we get your volunteers connected on this like gaming type plat platform where they, you know, maybe they get certain numbers of points for kind of volunteering and they connect with each other and they take pictures and they, and they say, hey, here I am at this event or here I'm on that event and, they, and we build a community of volunteers, uh, you know, that are connected by more than just the fact that they volunteer at Center on Halstead, but they're connected through this competition. Right to this, you know, which doesn't have to be a fierce competition, for, but for some it might be, right? But we could do that, or how do we connect homeless youth to services on you know, using an app that's not going to like completely take up all the data on their phone, right? Um, you know, or create some tech opportunities. You know, how do we, you know, how do I tell my board a story of the of the work that we do through data? using those infographics or a dashboard that doesn't just look like a two-year-old with a crayon took to a piece of paper. Like, how do I do that? So, do you want to add anything? So yeah, um, I, I think there are a huge number of ways that technology can facilitate the way that the Center on Halstead works. I am particularly interested in the fundamentals. Um, they need one central repository of data one central interface that all of their programs interact through. Uh, and then we've got to figure out a way to make it supportable, right? What technology choices can we make for the center on Halstead that allows them to sustain a system over time? I've got engineers that want to volunteer. But that doesn't mean that we can just slap some elaborate system into Azure and call it a day. They have to be able to support and sustain the system after it's been implemented. So. There are big questions, and big questions about the process that we use to design and create that system. Um, those are the things I'm most interested in on, on your behalf, Kim, uh, in the early stages. But there's so many projects that can be spun up in so many ways that we as a community can add value to the work and to the mission that the Center on Halstead provides. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much, really, for jumping in. So I mean, it, that sort of brings us, oh, I just like snowflakes a whole lot. Um, but also this, to me, like I end with this, usually I end with this on my trans trainings and my trans and GNC trainings, um, try to get people really comfortable with the idea of GNC bodies and trans folks. Um, but also I thought it fit here, right? Because I feel like at least it's not just me who doesn't know about tech. I also feel like there's a lot of tech folks who don't know a lot about how programs in nonprofits operate. And so I feel like together we can help each other grow and we can help each other kind of better understand the world around us and how to make life better for the folks that we serve. So, um, so there's that and there's Center on Halstead. So uh, thank you so much for listening and if you have any questions, here we are. Hi, I'm, I'm a data analyst at the AIDS Foundation and I kind of live in the middle space in which you're talking about. I do evaluation and stuff. Um, but I really, first of all, have to thank you for your vulnerability and your honesty, because I've worked at AIDS Foundation, I've worked at Center, uh, Howard Brown's board, and people can't talk about that externally or internally, so you're off to a good start, because you're asking for help, which is wonderful. But I guess I wanted to ask you to expand a little bit on, like, ooh, is that all you want? I don't know what I want. That's, that, I mean, no, I mean, seriously, like, I don't, like, if there were, think about with the AIDS Foundation, right, if there were, or even Howard Brown, right, if there were different ways to reach people, right, I'm, we're clearly not reaching all the people we need to reach. So, for instance, you know, you've got, you know, 60-something percent of folks who are by-identified experience domestic violence in their lifespan, right? Our data 
and our anti-violence project shows that we are not anywhere near reaching those folks. May I make a suggestion? Yes. I would say you do a, an inventory of the, all the agencies that are kind of tangential to what you do and see what they're doing. That way you're not reinventing the wheel. I know Howard Brown has like an EMR system that's like kind of like a co-op EMR system. So like oh, that's a, it's a great, I, I, think, uh, I think doing an inventory is a good idea. And you'll also know, though, that for a lot of nonprofits, you would think that some of the ways that we do things are like the most valuable and need to be protected things in the entire world. So that vulnerability you were talking about often also means that we'll share, but maybe we'll share just a little bit. And we don't always share everything because some of us are just afraid that people are going to see us warts and all. And that's just terrifying to a lot of places. So I'm going to take a question from the document. How varied are the data you're hoping to tame? How much data is there? Oh. <laughs> it's surprisingly unvaried. Uh, while there are significant differences between what you consider a unit of service, uh, what takes place in a visit, et cetera, the truth is there's a lot of commonality between the different programs that are kind of under Kim's wing. Um, in terms of how much data, there's, by what we would consider in the community, a relatively small puddle of data, several hundred thousand records. So for those of us who have a kind of a big data background, we're actually talking about a relatively small set. The question is what happens when we standardize our data dictionary, when we standardize the definition of a unit of service, when we build a true ERD that actually encompasses the entirety of what the center does, how much do we start collecting? What does the road forward look like? The truth is we aren't talking about big, big data, but we're talking about a sample set that's significant enough for us to come to interesting conclusions and to build a, a, a data store that allows us to do kind of the ad hoc queries that are necessary for the center to write grants and tell stories. There's another good question. There's many good questions, I'm sure, percolating in everyone's minds, but here's another one. What kind of security and privacy concerns are there, especially for both the vulnerability of the groups being served and also because of medical and legal concerns? Yes, we are HIPAA adherent. We, um, so in those situations where we have to deal with HIPAA-related data, that is secure. That is, and we use paper. We use a lot of paper. And so it is in locked file cabinets with, with protocols and all that kind of stuff. And then for the stuff that is, say, HIV related, it goes into, you know, the anonymous uh, information goes into provide, which is the city's database. So, I mean, it is, you know, very, very secure in that sense. Which is where I come in with the background in healthcare information systems. Um, it is HIPAA data. It is PHI data. It's subject to the same auditing requirements for access and modification on a database level that all healthcare information is subject to. Uh, it would also require, in terms of a cloud hosting solution, what's called a BAA, a legal agreement that protects the center with the hosting provider. Um, in addition to that, the HIV data is anonymized using um, tokens, essentially that are generated for each individual test. And then everything else would be subject to the same sort of regulatory requirements that any healthcare information system is subject to. Other questions? Oh, this is slightly off topic, but I live literally like a block away. I just want a huge tour. How do I get that accomplished? Oh, you just call me. I've got cards. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Anybody's welcome to a tour, definitely. And we'll introduce you to, to Gail Thompson, who runs our cyber center. We've got so many different options, you know, and opportunities in our cyber center too. Um, you know, teaching classes in the cyber center, and or just monitoring the cyber center, or making certain that you know people can actually log on. So can it be anything from like? I just want to be with people to help them with some computer stuff to like, I really want to teach people what, you know, how to code something, right? So you can do any number of things. Is the center only for the Chicagoland area or do you work out like through the suburbs? 
We primarily serve the Chicago land area, um, and there are other community centers in, or you know, uh, organizations in suburbs. Uh, if folks live near one of those, we would refer you to make certain that we you know, keep you near where you want to be. Um, but if there is, you know, something, uh, you know, the ability to remote, remote in or do anything like that, that's also an option. So, for instance, a way to use technology that we're excited about is um, we have seniors who meet. Now, this is just on the south side of Chicago, but they also meet on the north side of Chicago. And we would love for a way to get people to make these groups that go to different seniors' houses and say, we're going to show you how to use your technology. We're going to show you how to get this on your phone or on your iPad or whatever it is. And then when we have a meeting, we'll remote in. Right? So we could also think about extending that into the suburbs. Do you also share your data with the suburbs um, who are LGBTQ, a center for them? Yes. Do you share your data with yes. them? Yeah, yeah. We, we will share data with anybody who asks us to share the data that is shareable. Yes. I have one, but I'm not very familiar with the community, so if I say anything, please, I apologize. Um, I drive through Halstead going to Ravenswood and Uptown all the time. Sometimes I find myself riding through on a Thursday, Friday, or Saturday night, and I've noticed that the communities kind of come to the Boys Town area from all over. And during the daytime when I'm driving through, I don't see those communities from, say, the west side or the south side in those areas shopping or frequenting, you know, that really awesome pancake place over there. Nikki's, I love it. <laughs> like, first one. Um, has there ever been an idea to take the center of Halstead to 3656 South Halstead? Like the Folding Maps Project? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, check out the Folding Maps Project. They're That's presenting it. soon. They are? Yeah. Oh, amazing. So we are moving to the south side. In fact, we have youth housed on the south side already, and we are looking to build into in, um, become a hub or, you know, um, there for all kinds of uh, organizations. We just want to do it in a way that, look, we're a $7 million organization, which is smaller than many, but larger than many, right? And for us, 72% of our money goes straight into programming, right? So, and which is much better than a lot of other nonprofits. But I will tell you, here's the thing. We don't want to march down. There's a, so more than half the folks that we serve, you know, um, depending on the program, you know, are folks of color, and that's a good thing. The per mo half of our, more than half of our staff are POC. At the senior level, most of my, or good, about half my senior team, POC. But that's not the perception of Center on Halstead. The perception of Center on Halstead is that we're a center for cisgender white gay men, right? And for me, with, it, some of our actions, you know, when, I, when I tell my staff, if you quack like a duck and walk like a duck, you're a duck. So some of our actions over the years were ducks, right? We, we, are, we are what we are. And so, but with the team I've got now, we're looking to really change that. And we're looking to work in partnership with like Affinity Community Services down on the south side or Brave Space Alliance or Project Fierce other organizations that are doing the work that we would love to partner with and to help enhance. We don't want to do that in a really gross way. Like we just marched in the Bud Billiken Parade and had a really good response and that was really awesome. So we're going down, we're going down slowly, you know, so that we don't screw that up. You know, colonization, neocolonization, all that kind of stuff. No, all bad, bad, bad moments. Anthropologist to violence, <laughs> right? We don't, those things are bad. So, so yeah, but yes, point taken. Because one of the things that we, we say to folks, right, if you want to come up to Center and Halstead from the south side or the west side, fabulous, welcome, open arms, wonderful. We don't want, but we feel like sometimes for some folks it's a trade-off, right? Some people say, I don't want to be in my neighborhood because I want anybody to know this about me. Great, we're there. But I, we also don't want to make it so that when people come up, they've got to not be their full authentic selves. And for a lot of people of color, there's this notion that there's a trade-off, that if I'm going to go up to Lakeview and be amongst all these white folks, 
that I have to leave who I am as a person of color behind somehow, okay, that's not gonna work. And so I'm gonna face violence, I'm gonna face threats, I'm gonna face you know, all this you know, agitation and hostility. So what am I? Am I gonna be you know, POC here and gay here? Am I gonna be, you know, what, where am I gonna be all of me? And we wanna make certain that we're creating that space for everybody, which means we have to create that space with everybody. And so that's what we're trying to do.